So what are the pros and the cons to moving to Dallas? What's good? What's bad? First, very quickly, let's talk about what is Dallas. If I bumped into you in an airport in another part of the country and told you I'm from Dallas, that doesn't necessarily mean the city limits of the city of Dallas. It includes a bunch of suburbs and a bunch of smaller areas that are named different cities, different towns, different parts of town. Dallas is one of the largest cities in America. When we say Dallas, we're talking about the community of Dallas, Texas. So in that regard, there are quite a lot of positives and of course, some negatives. Know that you can find anything you want in Dallas, Texas. You can find amazing, nicest neighborhood in America. I think we have that here. And also some rough areas. You can find, you know, rural and you can find dense cities. So it's all here. And here come the pros and the cons. In the pro category, we've got access. And it, I'm talking access to everything. Healthcare, transportation, all those things, right? So let's just start with healthcare, okay? Big city, big healthcare. Many, many, many hospital chains, hospital groups, medical schools. We've got UT Southwestern, we have Baylor hospitals, we have Methodist hospital system, and many others, by the way. So depending on what part of Dallas you live in, you might have a regional hospital or a local ER hub of one of the main hospital systems. But we, as a community, have incredible access to incredible healthcare with heart hospitals and specialists for any sort of specialty area you could imagine when you think state statewide, you should never have to leave this state. When you think Dallas-wide, you would almost never ever need to leave the community. From hospital systems to ER access to specialty doctors and medical professionals, we've got it all and almost always within a short drive and the referral network that we have from a healthcare perspective in the Dallas area is excellent. Another pro is transportation. If you've flown anywhere coast to coast in the United States, there's a very good chance you have flown through Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. It is an almost perfectly centrally located international National airport to the entirety of the United States. Easy to get just about anywhere, but that's not even our, our only large airport. We also have Love Field, which you probably know as the hub of Southwest Airlines, which is a used to be more of a regional carrier, and now with connections, you could get almost anywhere you want to go. So that's just airport travel. We also have the Dallas area rapid transit, so our DART rail system. So if you're talking about local transportation or public transportation, it's, it doesn't cover every, you know, every area of the Metroplex, but it will get you to most of the major areas. We also have DART buses. So as far as local, we are not talking subway system like New York or an elevated train like Chicago, but you can get to the airport, to the downtown areas, out to some of the suburban areas on that DART rail system. As far as highways and automotive, We'll have traffic in another place on our pros and cons list, but you do have major highway systems, including public as well as toll roads that can help you get almost anywhere in the entire Dallas, Fort Worth, North Texas area in a pretty direct route. We'll talk about traffic probably on the con side of things, but the positive is that you do have a major highway system that allows you to get just about anywhere pretty directly. I think when you're thinking about transportation, I, I wanna bring up some of the things that, although they are not directly accessible here in Dallas, for example, cruise ships, let's just kind of bring that one up. But you can drive to Shreveport, New Orleans, Galveston, whether it's Texas or Louisiana, in a short drive. So that makes cruises even drivable instead of having to book a flight and do crazy things. So of course I could get into every type of transportation on the planet. We do have a train here that's not the rapid transit deal that allows us to get east-west and connect Dallas and Fort Worth for sports and some fun things like that. We have a huge positive when it comes to transportation getting to and from Dallas and within Dallas. We're really, really fortunate. Also pro, sports, entertainment, attractions, nightlife, we'll lump them all into one, which we could do five videos on them. We've got every major sport. I apologize if I'm offending you if you consider your sport major, but I'm talking about baseball, basketball, football, hockey, minor league sports. We've got rugby, we've got cricket, Esports, we have MLS soccer. I mean, it, the list keeps on going. For the sake of this video and this pro, we got it all. The point is, from an entertainment, local resident enjoyment perspective, it is a huge draw to be able to get basically between Dallas and Fort Worth every major sport. We've got access to all those things. And then outside of sports, when you start thinking about concert venues, a lot of those same facilities 
than double has major stadium tour concert venues, but also some midsize and smaller regional tours and things like that, whether it be comedians and all that kind of cool stuff. Toyota's got a big concert venue. We've got the horse racing track. I mean, we really do cover the full gamut. As far as theater, meaning like stage performances, downtown Dallas has some incredible opportunities. Fort Worth does as well, but sticking with Dallas, some really, really incredible arts facilities, museums. I'm sure most people watching this video are familiar with Ross Perot, the Perot family has poured millions and millions of dollars into the arts as far as facilities, but also bringing shows and talent here to allow us to have pretty much anything that's touring the country is going to make its stop in Dallas, including small suburbs like Richardson, for example, having facilities like the Eisman Center. So if you're looking at p different parts of Dallas, even in the suburbs and outer lying areas, we still have a vibrant accessibility to entertainment, to arts, to music, to theater, to sports, and really anything in between. When you're talking access to entertainment, recreation, sports, and like, Dallas is going to be very, very difficult to beat. All right, an obvious pro of Dallas, and I say obvious because most people know relative to the rest of the country where the Dallas real estate market is. So let's talk housing for a minute. Big positive of Dallas, we still have plenty of land to continue growing and developing, and that has been one factor to make Dallas residential housing a relatively affordable idea compared to many other parts of the country. Housing cost is still lower in Dallas than many other big cities in the country. It has grown, it has gone up, certainly over the last 10 years or so, depending on when you're watching this video. It is still accessible. We still have more of it than many other places and room to continue to build more of it for a long, long time to come. You can find housing in almost every part of the spectrum of residential housing, from condos and townhomes, to single family, to multifamily, to massive homes, to small and efficient homes, zero lot, I mean, it's all, every type of housing is here. From a price perspective, generally speaking, the entry point into residential housing right now across Dallas is gonna be the high 200,000, 285, 295 kind of deal. You can find some exceptions below that, but they're not the norm, and then I'm telling you, you can go as high as you want, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, and beyond, and if it's not here, you can build it here, right? So we've got acreage properties, we've got zero lot properties, we've got three, four, five story tall buildings, we've got skyscrapers in multiple different downtown areas, especially downtown Dallas, where you can be on the 30, 40th floor and more of a dense urban feel, or you can still buy 30 or 40, 50 acres on the edge of town and build whatever you wanna build, two homes, three homes, seven, eight, nine thousand square foot home, lakes, ponds, trails, all of it. So we, we really do still, have access to the full spectrum of residential housing. So if you're moving here from any other place in the country, you can probably find something that's familiar to you that's like where you came from or really experience a true stereotypically Texan housing lifestyle here and do it on almost any point on the financial spectrum, property style, uh, construction style, or anything like that. I believe that to be a massive, Positive, massive pro for Dallas, Texas. Pro again, let's talk about the job market, the economy, the, the, the lifestyle here as it relates to financial and income and things like that. Dallas for decades has been one of, if not the single best employment market for a major city in all of the United States of America. Know that depending on where you rank who and how, Dallas is still and certainly looks to continue to be a highly favorable job market. And that is proven in many ways by the number of major and small and mid-sized corporations that have just in the last decade made Dallas home. We've had Toyota, State Farm, many other big, big, big companies move to Dallas from other areas, and then many others consolidate regional or other multiple, multiple campuses here to the area. AT&T, many, many tech firms, telecom, transportation, automotive, Frito-Lay Pepsi. I mean, it, we're, PGA Golf moved here. I could keep going, I won't, but suffice it to say the proof is in the activity of major corporations that you've heard of moving here. And for every one of them, we have hundreds if not thousands of small and mid-sized companies moving here for favorable tax reasons, land development, incentives, all those things. But the point is there are jobs here in Dallas, Texas, which is one of the many reasons our real estate and local market economy has remained really, really solid, even at seasons when other parts of the country were really struggling. Those jobs 
that development, that growth, and all the positive recreation and food and all the benefits that come with it have helped Dallas remain very, very strong. If you're moving to an area and you're looking for not just the next job, but lots of opportunity for job and income and family and lifestyle for a long, long future, Dallas, Texas, has to be on the pro side of your list. There are some cons. So what would a con, what would a negative about Dallas be? And some of these are preference, obviously, but weather's probably the one that comes to mind first. And let's just get it out of the way. Yes, it's hot here in the summer months, but what many people overlook is that we do have most seasons, maybe three. We, we really do have four seasons, summer's long. One thing I wanna address as a con, as a negative, because we get lots of questions, is uh, tornadoes and also hail. So yes, we are still somewhat in the so-called tornado alley. We are in North Texas, think Southern Oklahoma, kind of Kansas beltway of the United States. Tornadoes are very rare in the city, in the major areas, in Dallas, in the, in the general area, but they can and do happen. This is not something that people in Dallas are really needing to think about on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis, but they do happen and it is something to be prepared for. Basically what that means is knowing where your interior closet without any windows are, Maybe if you're building a home thinking about having a, a reinforced closet or a storm shelter or a uh, purchased bolted to the slab foundation tornado shelter type thing, but tornadoes don't last days and days, they last minutes and minutes. And so this is not something that is a massive part of life here in Dallas. It is something you wanna be aware of. They don't happen often, but they can happen. So you wanna be prepared to protect yourself, your family and your friends. Now on the hail piece of that, hail is much more common here. Hail is going to happen here every spring, sometimes in the winter, maybe even in the fall, but it's not something that affects the entire area. A hail storm is a lot like a rainstorm or a thunderstorm. Dallas is a big area. It might affect kind of one zip zip code or or one region of town for a handful of minutes, you know, three, four, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most probably. It could impact your roof. You might need to file an insurance claim to replace a roof or it might impact your car if it's parked outside. It could affect your fence or your landscaping, but this is not a life-threatening type of storm. You wouldn't enjoy being out in one, but this is a property damage type thing. It's covered by insurance. That is something that people in North Texas do need to be aware of and be prepared. It's something that might affect you in your home every five to 10 years, but will affect Dallas as a whole regularly, pretty much every single year. That's something to think of as far as weather on the negative. Yes, it's hot. That's just part of the deal. A lot of people love it, by the way, but we definitely have our cold, our rain, our ice, our snow, beautiful fall and spring. But generally speaking, the things you want to be aware of are that tornadoes are rare, but they're real. Hail is common, but doesn't affect everyone every year. Something you can be prepared for. Another con that I think we can all agree on is traffic. This is a big, big city. And to the west, we are attached to another big, big city in Fort Worth. And to the north, we've got one blowing up that might be one of the largest cities in America before too long in Frisco. So this is a really, really big city with lots of highways, tollways, regular cross streets, grid system. It traffics the thing here. Right now, depending on where you live and where you commute, I personally don't encounter a tremendous amount of traffic. I don't drive southbound into downtown every morning and northbound out of downtown every evening. But the fact is, we do have big, massive six and eight lane highways that occasionally do have some gridlock. We've got the traffic helicopters updating everybody on the radio and on the TV news, where to avoid and all that. So yes, it is a big city in that regard. That is a part of it. But I will say compared to many other cities, Dallas does something about it. One of the negatives of that is we do seem to constantly have road construction, but that's because the city is trying to expand capacity so that traffic is not a constant negative. And we have seen some relief in certain areas of Dallas lately, there's constant growth. So yes, traffic's a negative here, deal with it. That's part of being in a big city, that's part of being in Dallas. So I'm sure we could say more, but that's what we've got for today. A bunch of positives, handful of negatives. We have a public Facebook group just for folks thinking about making a move to the area. It's called Moving to Dallas, Fort Worth. Go check that out, link below. Also check out the rest of the channel. We have lots of videos on lots of those specific areas within. If this video is helpful, share it with somebody like, subscribe to the channel. That lets us know this is a good piece of content and you want more. Let us also know in the comments what you would like more of, questions you still have. If you're thinking about making a move to the area, that is what we do. We help people buy in Dallas, Fort Worth, whether moving from out of the area or within the area. Our information is also below. I'll see you on the next video.